chance to get on. All right, good evening, Plano Panthers. We are happy to be with you again digitally. I hope that you had a great day doing um, some Google Meets with your classmates and your teachers today. And we got one more fun Google Meet for us this evening. We've got Jason Lindsay with us. And students, you probably had a great time on uh, Monday when he visited with us yesterday. And everybody who was at that assembly, you had a science kit that was sent home with you. So if you have those around the house, get those ready. Um, I do have the live chat going here. So if you have a question to ask Mr. Lindsay, I'm sure he'll take some questions from us at the end of this. And um, so you can put those questions there and I'll ask him a few of those. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Jason Lindsay. Hey, how was everyone on this snow day? We still get to do science, though, even though it might be a little slippery outside in some spots. I hope you and the family are safe and well. I'm Jason Lindsay, known as Mr. Science with Hooked on Science. I witnessed many of you this past week doing some cool science with you there at school. We accidentally caught a table on fire. What else did we do? We blew up a 23-foot-long diaper genie bag with just five breaths of air. Accidentally poured water on a teacher's head. I think we made a big mess that day, but we had fun learning about all kinds of things from pushes to pulls to energy to matter. The list goes on, and that fun continues tonight with with our uh, science night here that's virtual. We're gonna do all kinds of fun things. There are some things we're gonna do that's not in your bag, and then we're gonna do three experiments in your bag. So we're gonna do one experiment that's not in your bag, then one that's in your bag, then one that's not, and just keep going back and forth um, here and there so that we can uh, get through everything that's in your bag. I will post a link to all the guides if you wanna continue to do these afterwards. Uh, you can actually just go to hookedonscience.org and click on experiment guides or experiment archive, and all the guides for these are there. All you gotta do is look for the spring launcher, the leak proof bag, and the straw worm. Uh, some of you do have another experiment in there uh, that was pitched in by accident. You just got lucky and got it. It, it was uh, a sleeve, a copy sleeve, and uh, basically you put them together and it does something pretty cool. And uh, you can get the experiment guide on that one there as well. Just look for the copy sleeve arc is what that one is. It does a little uh, trick for your eyes. Don't eat or drink your science experiment. Have an adult around. Wear the appropriate safety gear when doing science. We want to make sure you and the family stay safe. Uh, don't forget, check out hookedonscience.org for the free experiment of the week. And on snow days like this, you will find a whole list of experiment archives that are there, science games, science videos. Uh, I don't use YouTube and I don't use TikTok because it's bad for kids. Therefore, I created something called Science on the Go. And Science on the Go helps your kid be able to enjoy science videos without those crazy ads popping up and inappropriate videos afterwards that you might see popping up there when it comes to YouTube and so on. HookedOnScience.org is that. I'm going to post some pictures there at the Facebook page. Just look for Hooked on Science on Facebook. Don't forget to post your pictures in your comments from tonight. Take a picture of your kid doing the science experiments, all that good stuff. And um, I will enter you into a drawing for my new book. It's called Big Science Experiments for Little Kids. It came out the fall of last year. I'll go grab a copy just to show you what it looks like. But I'll be giving away multiple copies of this for those of you who go post your pictures and your comments there at the page. Looks like this, Big Science Experiments for Little Kids. Uh, and it's got multiple experiments in here that you can try with kids. Bubble mania, excellent eggs, all that, putting soap in the microwave. Yeah, you can do that, actually. Uh, and all kinds of fun stuff. So, again, I'll be giving away a few copies of that as well. Hooked on Science on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you like the pages. Post your pictures there under the post that I post. Okay, enough about all that. Um, I am a scientist by training. I graduated from a high school in a town known for Corvettes. 
If you were there at school uh, this past week on Monday, yesterday, then you know what town I'm from because your teacher, your principal actually mentioned it. Duncan Hines is from your area, you know, the person who makes cakes. The longest cake system in the world is nearby. Uh, Bowling Green. So Warren Central High School back in 1997. So I'm a local kid. Uh, and then went to Western Kentucky University to become a scientist, a meteorologist. So you'll catch me doing the weather on TV stations across America, but more on the CBS station in Lexington. Okay, I wanna start with one that's in the bag. So all I need you to do is to get out ingredients for one experiment, uh, and then you're gonna leave everything else in there. The one that I want you to get out, and I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do this. I need you to get this bag out. You'll notice what the bag looks like. It's a bag that you might put a sandwich in. And the two pencils, there's two sharp pencils. Be careful, they are sharp for a reason because you're gonna do something with those. Then take this bag, you don't need those ingredients yet, put it aside. So the two ingredients, three that you need are two pencils and a baggie like this. Go ahead and grab those out. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do that and place everything else somewhere else. Go ahead, you may go. While you're doing that, I'm gonna be making that post on those pages. Also, as soon as you get those ingredients out, I need you to go fill your bag, open it up like this, uh, if you have a device around, like near the table, you're doing the science experiment, you need to move it back. Okay, have mom and dad hold it because this does include water and it might get it wet. So a device, a school computer, your own computer, an iPad, whatever it might be, you don't want to get it wet because we're going to be jabbing pencils through this bag and water might spew everywhere. Feel free to do it above your mom or dad's head. That's cool. You can do that. But just keep in mind, make sure your devices aren't nearby. How much water? Don't leave yet. Focus, focus, everybody focus, okay? What I need you to do is to fill it. Let me see, I'm gonna do this myself over here in my sink. I'm gonna fill it up. Uh, let's go half of the way. Half of the way is gonna work perfect. Once you do that, you're watching right now, you're not doing anything, by the way. Once you do that, you're gonna take and zip it up almost all the way. Then you're gonna push some of the air out and zip it up the rest of the way. So let me show you what it should look like once you come back. I need your bag to look like this. Halfway full of water, just like that. This is all about matter. We're gonna talk about it here in just a second. Halfway with water, zip the top up, keep it away from electronic devices, and you got your two pencils, okay? Oh, I just broke mine, maybe. There we go. Two pencils, make sure they're round. They should be round because those are the ones that I put in all your bags. And you have this. Go ahead and do that. Fill it up halfway full of water. We're getting ready to do this. You may go do it. Let's see, this is Rockfield Elementary, right? No, oh, Warren Elementary. No, Plano. Best school in the district, right? There you go. Plano kids. Play no kids smell like cheese. Okay, no, they don't. Okay, you should be getting your bag halfway full of water. And then you're gonna meet me back here. We got about 15 seconds left. Virtual family science night fun. I think I'm old, I'm talking into my phone. at Plano, P-L-A-N-O, there we are. Got about 10 seconds left. You're joining me back in front of your screen without getting the water all over the place. We're gonna be jabbing pencils through this, so get ready for that. About five seconds left. Everybody's joining me back in front of the computer at Plano, not the Plano. I guess you could be called the Plano Elementary School. Next and post. Okay, in 10, nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one on your bottom, feet in the floor, hands in your lap, or unless you're standing like me, you just know I need your attention. Eyes on me. This is all about matter. Matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. Matter can exist in five states. We know Kentucky, Tennessee, Illinois, ha, ha, ha. But we're talking about like a state of matter, like I'm breathing in air. That is a gas. The table is a solid. In the bag is a liquid. The bag itself is a solid. What about the other two? Bose-Einstein condensate and plasma. You won't encounter those unless you're in a science lab or on the sun, which you probably wouldn't survive anyway if you were on the sun, right? Unless you had a special outfit on that we designed that protects you from millions upon millions of degrees of heat. So solid, liquid, gas are the three main ones. Uh, matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. You're made of small pieces, I'm made of small pieces. The table's made of small pieces, but obviously your pieces and my pieces are put together uniquely. I'm not a table, I'm not a cup, I'm not a baby bottle, I'm not a flashlight. Yours are uniquely put together to create the coolest kid we know. But at the end of the day, we're made of small pieces. It's like a puzzle, but we can't take apart my pieces. I mean, I'm trying now, I can't take apart my pieces. It's not that easy. What we're gonna do is use those small pieces so that they link up around a pencil so that we can skewer the bag without it leaking out. Bag made of small pieces, bag is a solid. So think about my hands. Those pieces are linked around each other holding hands. And we need something to squeeze through those fingers, a pencil, okay? And as we squeeze the pencil through, it'll link up around it. So it'll look something like this. If my hands are the bag, notice how the pencil, my fingers link up around it. So those are the small pieces that are going to link up around the pencil that will keep it from leaking out all over the place. So matter made up of small pieces, matter anything that takes up space and has mass. Matter can exist in five sta states, but there's three main states, solid, liquid, gas. So here's what you're gonna do. Not above a device. You know what a device is, anything electronic, not your phone. Nothing like that, not the computer. So you're gonna take and you're gonna hold your bag like this. You don't do it yet, by the way, you're watching me. And you're gonna push pencils through the bag, just like that. And you'll notice it's not leaking. It's very important you have round pencils, not the pencils that are yellow, that are shaped like a stop sign. Make sure that they are round and sharp. And when you stick them through, they won't leak out. Pretty cool, right? Again, the reason why this works is because the bag is made of small pieces. Those small pieces are holding hands tightly around the pencils. I want you to try it now with mom and dad, brother, sister, parents, take pictures. I've already posted mine there at social media. Remember, you're going to post your pictures of your kids doing it there on the Facebook page so that uh, you can have a chance to win that book, Big Science Experiments for Little Kids. So go ahead, poke your pencils through your bag. Make sure it's not above an electronic device. Do some cool science. When you get through, you can pull your pencils out. <laughs> Excuse me. But don't do it above anything. Well, maybe the couch. Okay, no, never mind. Above the sink would be best to do that. I'm going to do mine above the sink, and there's the water leaking out everywhere. I'm going to take my pencils afterwards, since they're still usable, and place them back in my bag. I'm going to let you do that for just a few minutes. Play around with the bag. If you have more pencils at home that are like that, see if you can get multiple ones in that actual bag. I think I've had up to 20 pencils in a bag before. Yeah, and it depends on the quality of the bag, how long it might work. If you have the cheaper versions, it may not work as well as the more expensive versions of the bag. And remember, the round pencils are the best for this experiment. I'm gonna go ahead and let you play around with that. While you're doing that, take plenty of pictures, parents. And we are about to do an experiment called Capture Your Shadow. We gotta turn all the lights off for that here. Warren County Public Schools, do you be? We'll let it find it. There you are, you and your new logo. Didn't you all get a new logo? A few weeks ago, it was unveiled to much celebration. That's what I thought. That old one was there when I was there as a kid. 
Yep, same for me. I graduated high school a few years after you in 2000 from Greenwood. Oh, sorry about that. Oh. Greenwood, that had to be built because Warren Central got so big. Yeah, but then the same thing happened with Greenwood. And they had to build South Warren because Greenwood got so big. Exactly. Yes. And next, it'll be South Warren's going to get so big they got to build another school. Now, you got a new, Jennings Creek's your newest elementary school? That's correct, yep. Okay, I'm going to start wrapping up this science experiment. I want you to start cleaning up. Go ahead and take your pencils out above the sink. Put your bag in the sink. Let the water leak out and put your pencils back in your bag and join me back in front of your screen. We're going to capture a shadow next and talk about light and how light travels in a straight line. Got just a few minutes to do this. As I finish tagging. In 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now we're back in front of your screens, and we are about to do an experiment that's not in your bag. What I have here is something pretty cool. This is called a glow board that I created. Now, all this is is a sticker. You'll notice how it's kind of bubbling up in a few spots, proving that it is a sticker. So I have my sticker on a piece of cardboard. This sticker is just a glow sticker that I got from a place called Educational Innovations. You don't need it though. And you can create your same thing. You can get a piece of wood. You can do your whole wall in your bedroom. Just make sure you ask your parents first. Uh, you can go get glow in the dark paint from the department store and they sell it. If you use the spray can paint, you're gonna to have to use multiple layers. Same thing with the paint on paint as well. Just look for glow in the dark paint, your craft store, your local department store, paint it 10, 12 times, okay? And make sure you get a really good coating of glow in the dark on there. This is about light. Light travels in a straight line until it hits something. Once it hits something, it can do one of three things. Reflect, refract, absorb. Fourth graders are learning this. And you start really learning about it in first grade when we put objects onto a table and we sign light through it to see if light can get through it. If it can't get through it, we call that opaque. Light can't get through me. If I turn around, is there light shining through my back? No. Uh, but is it shining through the baby bottle? Yes, because the baby bottle is, is translucent. And then you have transparent air. I can shine the light and it's shining through the air and all good stuff. So transparent. Light can get through it easily, translucent, somewhat opaque, light can't get through it. Light travels in a straight line until it hits something, reflects, bounces off of, refracts, bends, or absorb takes in. I'm gonna turn off all the lights except for the light coming from the camera here and the light coming from my computer because we need this to be super dark in here and the light from the computer screen as well. Now that I have all of my lights off, I'm gonna place my hand. So you'll see my board here. I'm just gonna place my hand on top, okay? And then when I place my hand on top, I'm gonna to shine a bright light on it, just like this. So again, light travels in a straight line until it hits something. Right now, light is hitting my hand and it is bouncing off or reflecting, meaning I can see my hand. Um, light cannot get through my hand, it's opaque. Now what happens with this board is that it absorbs, and another word for absorb is to take in. It'll take in the light, and then it will re-emit the light, meaning that it will glow. So again, light can't get through my hand, therefore the board underneath my hand can't get the light, therefore it can't glow, and it makes it look as if I have captured my shadow. Isn't that pretty cool? I'll get a little bit closer, and you will notice how we have captured my shadow. We can make this disappear too. All I gotta do is take this bright light, this is just a regular LED light, and place it on the board. 
just like this. And notice how it disappears. It all goes away because again, light can get through the air and the board can completely absorb it. So again, place my hand on here, bright light on here. Light can't get through my hand. Therefore, the board underneath can't glow, and voila, I've captured my shadow. I can become Iron Man, put a hole in my hand, just like that, or I can erase the whole thing. I want to make sure it gets super bright. There we go. And I'm just going to erase this off. It might be good to practice ABCs and one, two, threes. What do I mean? Well, you can get a thinner light and write with it. See there? Pretty cool. A is for Apple, right? So there we have it. You can try this at home, but of course you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have to use an adult's help in order to do it because you don't need to be spray painting anything. I'm gonna put some other objects on here. This is something first graders might be doing. So I have an Alka-Seltzer pack. See my Alka-Seltzer pack? That's something mom and dad might take for an upset stomach. My keys, I'm gonna place my keys on here. And what else? Oh, I bet you have a fork over here. Let's put a fork on there. And put a fork on there and then I'm going to place a bright light onto the board. I'm going to count down from 15. You can count down with me if you want. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Remove that and look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? We were able to capture the shadow of the fork, the Elka Seltzer packet, and my keys. Kind of looks like they're all there. I'm gonna turn on some lights now, so now that you can see me, this will be just a few seconds as we get everything going here again. And there we go. Can you see me a little better now? So that is capturing your shadow. I used a sticker to do it. You can use it by using, you can create it by using paint from the hardware store, from the craft store, from your local department store. Okay, now it's time to do another experiment from the bag. The one that we're gonna do from the bag has to do with a spring launcher. So I need you to pull out of your bag, get the instructions first. We'll wait just a second before you grab stuff out. The dowel rod and the notebook spring. So this is from the side of a notebook. Go ahead and grab that. Place it right here on your table. And then you can put your other bag on another table. So I'm gonna give you just a couple minutes to do that for me. Just a couple of minutes. Go ahead and grab everything that you need there. And you're going to place everything on the table, just two ingredients. Some of you have already made some comments. We got one kid, Holly Scott's kid, is catching on fire. Oh my goodness. Okay, no, he's not. He's got how many pencils? Two pencils in there, and he's smiling big time. Okay, uh, uh oh. We have uh, another Alicia Napier posted a picture. Looks like dad's participating in that one. Make sure you do it above dad's head next time, okay? Nicole May posted a picture. They pu pushed all kinds of pencils through their bag. And then we have some other kids on here as well uh, that's doing this cool science experiment. Glad to see that Bree Duncan's kid is doing it above the sink, although you should have done it above your mom's head, okay? She's doing some hooked on science there in the kitchen. Thanks for posting those pictures. Again, what I will do is I will take everybody's name, put it in a hat and draw it out for, draw out two names for two books. And then uh, the next time I'm in Bowling Green, which will be in the next week or so, I'll drop them off at your school and say, hey, go pick them up from your awesome principal. Okay, now you got these two ingredients in front of you. You've got the spring and you've got the dowel rod, okay? This is all about energy and force and motion. So energy is the ability to do work. 
You can't create it. You can't destroy it. The only grade that's really learning about this in elementary school is fourth grade. You get energy big time in fourth grade, then you'll hit it again in middle school. But by the end of fourth grade, we learned that energy is the ability to do work. You can't create it. You can't destroy it, but you can transform it. So we are about to transform potential energy, which is stored energy, to kinetic energy and launch this spring at your principal. Okay, good thing we're virtually. He might get one in the eye. We'd have to make him wear goggles. Maybe he should do this tomorrow. Bring this to school and go to his office and just launch them all in his office. I think that's a good idea. What well, do you think, Mr. Frazier? I think we're going to have a, maybe an NTI day tomorrow. Sorry, can't can't do it tomorrow. Oh. No, just kidding. So maybe... No NTI day has been announced yet. Just disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> make that clear. It has not been announced that your school's closed just yet. <laughs> but as a meteorologist, you are expected to get a little bit more wintry weather, possibly again on Thursday, too. But when you're going in the summertime, you're going to wish these NTI days did. Well, NTI, what does that mean? That means you work from home, right? That's right. So it doesn't count against you. That's okay, right. that's right. I forgot. Since COVID, we can do everything from home now. Okay, back to our experiment. Got this. Now, this is important, so I'm going to get a little bit closer to the camera. I'm going to take my pointer, the one you pick your nose with, okay, and your thumb, okay, and you're going to take and hold it like this. See there? pinch it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to put it right onto the dowel rod, making sure it's not going between your fingers and the dowel rod. See how my fingers are not stopping the dowel rod as I push it down, pull it back. That's important. So it should like bounce right on top of your fingers. Then what I'm going to do is pull this all the way back. Well, you're going to have a task to where you're going to pull it Let's talk a little bit about math. Okay, let's say you have 100 pennies. Uh, you know that's a dollar, right? Uh, one fourth of a dollar is quarter or 25 pennies. Half of a dollar is 50 pennies or 50 cents. Three fourths of a dollar is 75 cents or 75 pennies. And a whole dollar is 100 pennies. So you're going to do less than a whole and launch it. So just less than a whole, not two seventy-five or three quarters but less than a whole, because there has to be some tension, okay? Then you're gonna go to three quarters, then you're gonna go to half, then you're gonna go all the way down to a quarter, okay? And launch it each time. Will it go a greater distance like this? Half, three quarters, or barely a whole, okay? And how do you launch, whoa, okay. Well, I think you know how you launch it. You're gonna take and pull it back like this. Eyes are on me, don't be launching yet. And then you're gonna let it go and it launches. Don't aim it at anybody's eyes, including your pet, your pet hamster, squirrel, guinea pig, skunk, whatever kind of pet you have at home. Make sure you're not launching it at those animals, okay? So you're gonna pull it back. Hole, well, wait a minute, well, not a hole, a little bit less than a hole, less than 100, but not to 75, then to 50, then to 25. One fourth, half, three quarters, almost all the way. Okay, I'm gonna let you do that for a little bit, making sure you're not aiming it at anyone's eyes. When you are done, you're going to place that back in your bag. And while we were talking about animals, I do wanna show you two that are not alive, but are pretty cool. So I'm gonna let you finish that experiment up. Don't forget to take a few pictures, parents, while they are doing that. And I'm gonna grab some stuff here to show you when it comes to animals. And I have a real dinosaur egg. My pet dinosaur's in my closet. He comes out every once in a while. And he only eats kindergartners. So we gotta make sure he doesn't eat any kindergartners. Okay. Ooh, I got some dinosaur poop too. Yeah, it's fossilized, it's real. You finish up your experiment and we will get to that stuff here in just a few seconds before we do the exploding baby bottle, then it's about 30 after, then we're going to end on the straw worm, ask some questions and wrap everything up. And Because you may have school tomorrow. We don't know yet. You may not. We don't know yet. A few more minutes of launching. I'm going to go check out to see if there's been any more post from that. And it looks like you are really putting a lot of pictures on there. Thank you so much. Go check it out. You got it right there. You're posting those pictures. I'll enter into that drawing.
The place to go for weather updates that I do for all of Kentucky, including Bowling Green, is KY Weather Lab. That's where I'll post this picture too. So KY Weather Lab on Twitter, and I post science and weather updates there uh, often. So make sure you go check that out. And usually it's for the entire state of Kentucky, not just up here in central Kentucky. You're in South Central. We're in Central here. Okay, let's wrap that up because otherwise you'll be launching those all day long at the ceiling fan and everything else. Uh, try not to pull the spring because it will stretch it out and it won't work anymore. Try to keep it the way it is. Uh, go ahead and put everything back in your bag and get in front of your screens there because we are about to look at some interesting things. By the time I get to one, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's look at some creature stuff, because it's poop here too, dinosaur poop. Creature stuff from a long time ago, when dinosaurs once roamed the earth. So they had a poop like us, okay? So what I have here is something called fossilized dinosaur poop. And you will notice that it's a rock, basically. You'll see it right here. Uh, basically, what we did is we cut it off of the side of another piece, and it's smooth. It looks like it would be great granite, or not, it would be great countertops. Dinosaur poop countertops? I mean, yeah. It is a rock now, because what happens over time, and we start learning this in third grade, and by fourth grade, we really hit weathering erosion deposition. So weathering the breaking down of things, uh, maybe it is a rock over time, sedimentary rock. Weathering, then erosion means it's moving it from one spot to the next, and then deposition, it's depositing it in a new spot. Weathering, erosion, deposition. So over time, if an animal dies, the dinosaurs here, okay, it pooped here, over time you get stuff put on top of it, including the breaking down of smaller rocks, soil, pushes it all down over millions of years, then suddenly you get a fossil. So this is fossilized dinosaur poop. Doesn't smell like poop, but it does smell like fifth grade boy armpits, which is pretty stinky sometimes. Either way it goes, over millions of years this formed, a lot of pressure down on it. We talk about different rock types, sedimentary, igneous, metamorphic. You know about them from Minecraft. You know that obsidian is an igneous rock. Lapis, uh, which is the, um, it's a blue, a royal blue color with some gold inside of it. That is a metamorphic rock and then sandstone, which is a sedimentary rock. So that's dinosaur poop. What else do I have in here? Uh, that's not that important, no. Oh, I have some real Spinosaurus teeth. Okay, so these at one time were in the mouth of a Spinosaurus. A Spinosaurus, remember it had that fan on its back? And the reason why it had that fan on its back was because um, it would use it to uh, warm up. Uh, so they're cold-blooded, right? And it would use that fan on its back to take in sun. It was like a solar panel. But this is what a real Spinosaurus tooth looks like. They're very fragile. So I need to make sure I don't drop it. But it was sharp. This was in a Spinosaurus. Ew, Spinosaurus breath stinks. It was inside of a Spinosaurus's mouth at one time. That's it right there. Pretty cool. Um, it's neat holding something that's very, very old that was once in a dinosaur's mouth. This one's pretty cool. Oh, look at this shark tooth. Um, the shark tooth, megalodon tooth right here. Uh, let's move the light so you can see this just a little bit more. I'm going to take and drop this down. Okay, so this here is a uh, megalodon tooth. And on the sides of it, it kind of looks like a saw. And what would happen, let me show you because I have a shark mouth over here. What would happen with time is once the megalodon would lose its teeth, it would eventually create another line of teeth. So if you look closely here, you'll notice there are multiple lines of teeth there in this shark's mouth uh, that when it would lose a tooth, there we go, that's a better view. When it would lose a tooth, a new one would come in. A new one would come in. So it had an everlasting, it never had to brush its teeth, never. It lost a tooth and there'll be another one waiting to come in. Now we have what, two sets of teeth? Some people, if they're lucky and it's rare, they have three sets of teeth. Uh, but most of us just have two. And then once we start losing our back teeth, back when we were in cavemen and women days, we would have our 
uh, final set of teeth coming in the very back back there, the um, the wisdom teeth, because by then you had a lot of wisdom, right? Now they don't even form. In my case, my bottom wisdom teeth never formed because I changed so much that my body knew I didn't need them anymore. Pretty cool, right? There's that one. Can you imagine having these in your mouth? I mean, it's just fitting across the front of my mouth. What else do I want to show you? Oh, the dinosaur egg. So this is an over raptor egg. So a baby over raptor came out of this. Uh, again, it's a fossil. I'll hold it for you. You will notice it's probably what, six inches long, three inches wide here, maybe four. Some of the shell is still on there. This is the shell over here, the black part, it's shiny. This is a rock, a sedimentary rock that it was on. There was another dinosaur egg here. Some of the shell came off, see there, as they removed it from this one here. But the one time there was a baby dinosaur inside, there is not now. What happened was over time, weathering erosion deposition, sediments of dirt and so on got inside and it made the egg fill out. So. Um, Again, at one time, there was a baby dinosaur in there. Pretty cool. You hatched from a dinosaur egg, right? Oh, no, you didn't. Never mind. Okay, so we're going to put this back in here. Oh, this is pretty cool. This happened near your area. You remember this? It happened on February the 12th. That's coming up. 2014, the National Corvette Museum sink, coal, dirt, and rock right here. I remember buying this. That happened right in your area. There's some sink, coal, dirt, and rock in there. That thing made national news when that happened, and some beautiful Corvettes were destroyed forever. I think they're still down in there at this point. Now, some other animals that you might see nowadays. This I like to play dodgeball with, with the mean kids. This is called a porcupine fish. Of course, it is expanded now, but usually it's a lot smaller. It only expands whenever it gets threatened or something tries to hurt it. And this is the little spikes that have poison on them, actually, that will stick into the predator. Uh, this would be the prey, and you no longer want to bite a porcupine fish after that. Here you go. You can kiss them goodnight. Okay. Say bye. And then the last one I want to show you so we can get to the exploding baby bottle is a piranha. See the piranha? That, that's pretty cool. See those teeth in the front? Smile. Does this look like Mr. Frazier? Nah, Mr. Frazier doesn't look like this, does he? This looks like the science guy, I think. Okay, so those were just some things that I wanted to show you that you may never get to see in real life, but uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, this thing here I wanted to show you, this was found not too far from you. It's a geode, actually. You know what a geode is? It's ugly on the outside, but when you crack it open, it's beautiful on the inside. So this was found in South Central Kentucky. Uh, very rare just to find them anywhere, but uh, that's a, a geode that was in your area at one time. Let me put this up and we're going to go to the exploding baby bottle. Back to matter. We usually hit a matter in second and fifth grade in Kentucky. Fifth graders really learn about this topic and it is called chemical and physical reaction. So a chemical reaction happens when you mix two ingredients together and you get something new. So a chemical reaction happens when you mix two ingredients together and you get something new. We're going to mix together some toilet water, I mean regular water and Alka-Seltzer and that's going to give me something new called carbon dioxide gas. This looks just like an ordinary baby bottle, the ones that sixth graders drink from, right? Sixth graders drink from bottles? No, 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 sixth grade teachers do, that's right. So regular bottle, screw it on, you put your milk in, water, whatever, has a rubber part at the end, baby drinks from this, everybody's happy until they're hungry again, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some water in here about three quarters of the way, three quarters of the way, Let's just do half. I don't want to explode too much here in the kitchen. Okay, Alka-Seltzer. If I don't know what matter is, I describe it by its observable properties. Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it uh, smooth, excuse me? Is it hard? Is it soft? What does it smell like? If it's safe, what does it taste like? We usually don't taste in science class. Alka-Seltzer, very smooth to the touch here as I rub the sides. It's hard. Uh, it, now, a, a chemical reaction, you get something new, but a physical reaction, let me show it to you. 
There we go. That's a chemical, physical reaction. It's still Alka-Seltzer, whether you break it into a million pieces or you just have one piece. Alka-Seltzer is still Alka-Seltzer. But when you add water to it and you get something new like we're about to get, carbon dioxide gas, then that is called a chemical reaction. So inside of my, is it Halloween? Is that the next... Is that the next holiday? Or maybe this was just some old cups left over. The next holiday is Thanksgiving. No, it is Valentine's Day. It's coming up. Do you still do Valentine's Day parties? Oh, cool. Uh, what about Thanksgiving Day parties? Oh, no, they don't do those. I'm going to dip this in here, and you'll listen. I'll put it close to my mic. It's fizzing and it's bubbling. So that's a chemical reaction. It's fizzing, it's bubbling. Those are bubbles of carbon dioxide gas. You can see them just like that. What we're gonna do is place these two inside of our baby bottle. These two pieces inside. I'm gonna screw the top on, and if it's really creating a new something, and since this rubber piece does not have a hole in it, that means we should be able to build up a gas on the inside. Something similar happens right around Thanksgiving. We're eating all the turkey. We're eating all this food. And then suddenly we feel bloated. And it's because our small intestine are doing this. They're expanding with gases on the inside. And those gases make us feel bloated when we eat too much. So that's why you feel bloated. Your small intestine are expanding. They're getting bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller because of gases that are forming inside. Notice it's expanding. Something new is being created inside of my bottle. It's called carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide gas, same gas that makes your mouth tingle when you drink soda and makes you burp out loud when you drink too much soda. So if I release this oh, good gravy where did it go it pops right off that gas builds up so much so it launches through the air and we just have the exploding baby bottle that launched into my ceiling here pretty cool science experiment right while we're on the topic of matter let's grab the last ingredient from your bag you will also need to grab another thing some water in a cup Fill the cup about three quarters of the way with water. That's what I just did. And you need that straw in there, that straw inside of the bag. I need you to lay everything on the table. I'm going to use a plate to do it on. If you don't want your table too messy, parents, you can use a saucer, a plate, whatever it is. Just make sure, try to get a darker colored plate so you can see it a little bit better. But this is called a straw worm. We're going to prove there's a worm in your straw. Yeah, sounds gross, right? But there's a worm in your straw. Go ahead and grab those ingredients, a cup of water, three quarters of the way, and your straw, okay? And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go find the rubber part of this bottle so I don't step on it later. Found it. And I'll remind you, students, if you have a question, you can put that in the chat box and we'll have a few minutes for questions here at the end, but you can just put that, that question in the chat box and we might get Mr. Lindsay to answer it. Yes, it'll be fun. Remember, questions start with who, what, when, where, why, how. We're not looking for stories, but questions. We'll put our baby bottle back in the bag. Maybe. There's a science behind this, I guess. There we go. So you should have your straw, in addition to your straw, a cup of water. And we are about to prove that there is a worm in your straw. Matter anything that takes up space and has mass. Uh, when it comes to matter, remember we describe it by its observable properties. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this so that you can see it. So my straw. This is important. Before you do this, make sure you're paying attention. Everybody, where you're at, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, when you get your straw, this is very important because if you don't do this right, the experiment won't work. So my hand is the table, right? You're going to take and you're watching. You're not doing yet. You're going to go about halfway up the straw and hold it like this. 
And then you're going to take and put it on the table and do this slowly until all of the wrapper is pushed to the bottom. And this is a long straw, so you may have to finagle it just a little bit. You may have to push and pull, which is a force. Make sure you get it squashed up as much as possible. Then you're going to pull it off and it should look like that. So I need you to have it squashed up just like this. See there? Make sure you squash it up. And then we're going to do something cool with it, okay? Let's see. Just like that. Make sure it looks like that. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do this because we are about to prove there is a worm in your straw. This one really works on fine motor skills and problem-solving skills, which are very important for science. While I'll give you a few more seconds because I may be giving you too many tasks to do at this point. So let's just get that straw all the way down. Kindergartners is going to be a little bit harder for you. So parents, you may need to try them, try to help them a little bit. I'm going to give you just a few more seconds while you master that. Okay, we're going to start wrapping this one up. Well, not wrapping it up, but um, getting ready to go to the next step is what we're going to do. So you should have your scrunched up straw on the table. Don't do anything yet. Next, it's really masters the fine motor skills. You're going to take your straw, put it in the water, put your finger on the end, okay? Use your other fingers to hold it and then lift up. You're turning it into an eyedropper. Did you see that? Finger, put it in, finger on top, lift up. In, finger on top, lift up. That's what we want to do. I want you to practice a few times with this. We don't want to put all of the water at once on there. We want to be able to take our finger and tap just a little bit to put a little bit at a time in there, a little bit at a time in there. Everybody good with that? Okay, so let's practice again. Straw in water, finger on top, lift up. Like that. What you're gonna do is put drops of water on your straw worm. Do you see my straw worm? Watch, I'm gonna get some water over here. Try not to drop it, eyes are on the camera. Watch what happens. Do you see that? It's moving, it's alive. Okay, maybe there really isn't a worm in your straw, but it sure did look like it. We'll talk about what it, what all of that means in just a few seconds. I want you to play around with your straw worm for just a few minutes. Practice with it. Drop those drops of water. Moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, whomever's with a kid that's an adult. Make sure you're taking plenty of pictures and posting those there at that Facebook page for me. And we are about to see if you have any questions after we wrap that up. So just about 60 seconds left of you trying that. Don't forget the Facebook page is called Hooked on Science. Once you see it pop up, it'll be Jason Lindsay, a.k.a. Mr. Science with Hooked on Science. KY Weather Lab is the other, uh, the Twitter page. And on Instagram, it's just called Hooked on Science. Um, and uh, multiple people have posted some of those pictures there on the Facebook page. So again, what I'll do is I'll enter you into that drawing for the free uh, Hooked on Science book called Big Science Experiments for Little Kids. I will let you know who the winner is by Friday by posting the answer on that page in that post, okay? Okay, let's wrap it up. Let's clean up really fast, and we're going to talk about it after we clean up. 
So take your straw paper, go put it in the trash, wipe off your table, make sure your area is clean by the time I get to 1, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Back on your bottom, feet in the floor, hands in your lap, eyes on your screen, eyes on me. Do you have any questions for me, Mr. Frey? Well, first off, let's talk about what happened. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. When you put the water on there, that paper was very absorbent. What's absorbed me? Take in. So it takes in the water like a sponge. And what happens is, is since it's scrunched up, like all flat together, when it absorbs the water, it expands. It gets bigger and it looks like it's an actual worm, but it's not. It's just a piece of paper. You can try different kinds of straws, Starbucks, Wendy's, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, list goes on, list goes on. You got a Cane's there now, try their straw. Just the straws are all made differently. Therefore, sometimes they may expand faster or slower because of that. Dunkin', Starbucks, I mentioned all of those. Just try different straws. Those are called variables, by the way. But it's because the straw paper is absorbing the water and it's making it expand. Any questions, Mr. Frazier, that you're seeing popping up there? Well, right now, the questions uh, or the chat box is very quiet and no questions coming yeah. yet. But I would like to know, what are some careers that rely heavily on science? Because our kiddos, we're about to have a career fair here in a few weeks. So you know, what, what kind of careers would be um, heavily involved with science? Heavily involved in science. Actually, let me take off my microphone because I have all kinds of posters on those that are very quick and simple. And we can look at some of those different careers. They're pretty cool. And I forgot to bring those in here. They're in my science closet where I keep my dinosaur. So if he escapes and runs in here, I'm sorry. We'll have to quickly grab these. And I'll be right back. Stay where you're at, Dino. Hmm. Here we go. All kinds of STEM careers. Okay, so let me put this microphone back on because these are all cool STEM careers that I wanted to quickly show you since you are having a big career fair coming up. Okay, transportation engineer. So a transportation engineer basically makes sure our roads, the ones we have here in Kentucky, and the systems of transportation, including trains, are all safe. That is what an engineer does when they are a transportation engineer. A uh, sound engineer. Sound engineers are trained to use machines to record and make sounds. Uh, for example, you'll notice here they are producing music, or in this case, the music that eventually comes out of your radio that has to do with a lot of sound. This is a cool one. We do have some astronauts eventually that were born and raised in Kentucky and became astronauts. Astronauts are people who train to live and work in outer space. Anybody want to be an astronaut? Programmer, my oldest son, who is 20, he'll be 21 soon, is going to school to be one of these. Basically a computer programmer. They write software programs. These programs are made up of instructions for computers to follow. For example, what you are doing right now, you were on Google Meet, somebody had to program that so that we could actually communicate and talk. A mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineers, you can see what they're doing there. They design and build tools and machines like cars that have lots of moving parts, mechanical moving. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good one that you're going to see. A doctor. Uh, you know what doctors do. They've been helping us especially a lot. They already do, but you know, when COVID hit, we really needed their help. Responsible for helping people stay healthy. Oh, a marine biologist. This is a good one. Uh, marine biologists are scientists who study living things in the ocean. For example, like the uh, porcupine uh, fish that we were looking at earlier. Architects, they are also uh, scientists. Uh, architects are designers of buildings and other structures. Architects built your school many years ago. Uh, earth scientists, they study things like our planet, its land, water, air, volcanoes. Um, a chemist, chemists are important. They're scientists who study solids, liquids, and gases. We just talked about that. And what happens when they are mixed together. Hmm. Oh, a water scientist. Uh, water scientists are important because they study water all around the world. And they also tell us the importance behind keeping that water 
clean. Oh, this is a good one right here because some of you probably want to do this. Video game designer. They design games like Minecraft. Um, you know, the list goes on. There's all kinds that are out there that you all like to um, play around with. Oh, roboticist, uh, like the drone there. They create machines called robots. So that's a few science careers that I wanted to introduce you to, Mr. Frazier, uh, as we kind of wrap up anything. Any other questions or any questions at all since we started talking about careers? Well, I think one, one thing I noticed when you're presenting those most of those careers do not take place in a lab and with someone wearing a white lab coat most of those are are in various locations and and doing different things so it's not just what we think of as a scientist that uses science mm -hmm. no you're exactly right there is a stereotype or a stigma that scientists must stay in a lab with a lab coat but we don't sometimes i'm usually out tracking storms and tornadoes and hurricanes and all kinds of stuff as a meteorologist and scientists can be men or women boys or girls eventually uh becoming men and women uh and at the end of the day anybody can be a scientist and you as students can do anything you want when it comes to science or whatever you want to be when you grow up well mr Lindsay, thank you for spending time with us at one point we had uh over 90 people watching this and i know some um, homes there's more than one person watching so that's a lot of people who are participating tonight so thank you for students thank you parents for helping your students log on and we hope you had a great time and uh, mr Lindsay, we hope you stay safe and until next time we'll see you later yes sir keep safe keep well